Welcome to Module Monday. Module Monday is a video series where I show off a cool new PowerShell module that I think you should check out. Uh, in this week's version of Module Monday, we're actually going to be looking at PS Readline. PS Readline is a Bash inspired Readline implementation for PowerShell. It provides a whole bunch of cool terminal experiences that make it easier to work with uh, your PowerShell commands and scripts inside the actual um, terminal that you may be using. So if you're using a more recent version of Windows 10 or you're using the VS Code integrated terminal, you already have PS Readline installed. So, so a lot of people may not even be aware that they're actually using it. But it actually provides a whole bunch of cool features that I think we should uh, kind of dive into. So you can actually install PS Readline directly from the PowerShell Gallery using install module. And I would suggest checking out uh, 2.1 beta 2. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So I have a ter uh, Windows terminal here, and I'm just going to type get module, and you'll see that I have uh, version 2.1 beta 2 installed of PS Readline. Um, the most uh, kind of obvious feature that PS Readline provides is the ability to, or the functionality of syntax highlighting directly in your console. So you'll notice that get module here is this yellowish color, and parameters are gray, and then strings are kind of this bluish teal color. So that's PS Readline actually looking at the commands that we're typing, and then it is actually syntax highlighting and changing the color of the command so that it's easier to kind of see what the command does. Additionally, it does some syntactical error checking. So for example, if I open a squiggly brace here, um, next to my prompt you'll see that little red error uh, carrot turn, or the carrot turn red, indicating an error, and that means that the syntax of this particular command is not correct. Um, in this case, I have a brace that's open, but uh, no, no closing brace. So if I click type the closing brace, you'll see that the uh, error goes away, and I could execute this command. Uh, this is handy when you have things like really nested commands that you may be executing, and you want to know whether or not it's actually a c complete command. Because if you were in a regular editor, you'd get some red squigglies uh, indicating that uh, the syntax of the particular command was not correct. Another thing that PS Readline provides is the ability to use history. So history in itself is not novel. If you press up and down, you're going to get the history of the commands that you actually executed inside this command line window. Uh, what's cool about PS Readline, though, is it, it offers some additional features around history that make it a little bit easier to work with. Um, first of all, it keeps history uh, in a file so that when you open a new terminal, it actually has your history from previous terminal sessions. So I actually open a new window, and then if I open or import PS Readline, and now if I press up and down, you'll see it has the history of my previous command line window. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's good to know that that is happening because anything you type on your command line is now being saved to a text file. So if you want to see where that is, I use the get PS readline option function and you'll see uh, the history save path here is just a text file where um, PS readline is just storing all the commands you're executing. So if that is a security concern from you, you can always uh, turn off the you know, the, the saving of history to um, that particular file. But it's pretty handy if um, you want to have history between your sessions. So um, in addition to history, uh, just uh, up and down history, the other thing that you can do is you can also search history. So if you hit Control R, uh, it does a, a backward search through your history, and then you can start typing. So for example, get PS readline option was the first thing it found, but I could also do something like get process. And it's actually searching even multi-line history, so if a particular command had um, that text in it, it's going to suggest that to me. And then if I hit enter, it's actually going to go ahead and execute that particular command. So that is um, pretty handy if you have, um, you know, if you're doing a lot of command line experience or uh, editing and you want to search your history. Um, in addition to being able to do uh, history searches, you can also uh, use copy and paste just like you would in any other editor, which is kind of cool. So for example, if I have get process and I hit control and um, highlight this particular um, item here and hit control C, um, unlike a regular terminal, it's going to copy that rather than terminate that command. And now if I hit control V, you'll see that it, it pastes that command that I just copied. So a lot of the movement that you see inside the terminal here is also provided by PS Readline. So for example, skipping the different sections of the commands here um, using control and the arrow keys works. Um, and that is 
uh, pretty handy, as well as moving through multi-line commands. So you'll notice that I can go up and down through this multi-line command um, and edit things on any line of this command. So it kind of just provides this better experience um, when working with multi-line commands as well. Um, in addition to uh, those other kinds of editing features, you can also do things like um, undo and redo. So it has an undo redo stack built in. Um, you just hit the arrow keys that you're kind of, or the keystrokes that you're used to. So control Z will do undo. Um, so you can uh, undo different, uh, you know, keystrokes or, you know, sections of code that you put into uh, your command prompt. So it really takes it from a uh, kind of basic terminal into almost a full um, editing experience that you would expect from something like VS Code. Um, additionally, it provides some things like IntelliSense. So if I have uh, a command partially typed and I hit Control Space, um, you're going to see that it's going to provide me with some uh, different options um, that I can actually navigate with um, the control key or the arrow keys. So I have get process and it's giving me an output of all the different uh, parameter sets as well as get process uh, migration. And if I hit um, enter, it actually completes that for me. Um, this also works with things like um, parameters, so I can actually do it there. So that's a pretty handy little thing um, to do is uh, invoke that with control space. Um, now we're gonna look at some of the options that we can actually modify inside um, PS readline. So I'm going to pop up some scripts. And uh, the first one that I um, am going to put in my profile is enabling the new uh, predictive um, kind of uh, experience in PS readline. So there's the tab complete kind of uh, suggestions for your commands, but there's also this predictive um, technology they have built in. So if you use set PS readline option prediction source history and hit enter. Now when I start typing commands, you're gonna see that there's this little gray command that shows up after um, what I've typed so far. And that is actually the uh, predictive um, engine, I guess, or prediction engine, um, looking up what it thinks I'm trying to type. So if there are things that I type um, you know, frequently or recently, uh, it's looking at my history and then determining whether or not um, it should suggest those commands. So for example, if I wanted to do, you know, get process at some point in time in the past, I, I typed get process pwh find open file select first five. And if I hit the right arrow key, it will actually complete that for me. So it, it's a little, um, I, I wouldn't say difficult, but it's, there's a little learning curve there uh, for your muscle memory. I kept hitting tab all the time to try to do that. But um, by default, it is the right arrow key and that will complete the predictive text for you. So it seems like people are kind of, um, you know, one way or the other on the predictive stuff. I think uh, personally it's awesome, and after I learned how to use it, it became like um, a very uh, important part of my workflow. So I'm glad that uh, they have implemented that feature. Um, let's actually look at some other options. Um, one we're going to do is we're actually going to set uh, the um, edit mode. So I am not an Emacs user, but um, there is Emacs edit mode, which uh, kind of changes the behavior of some of the um, some of the keystrokes. So it pretty much changes the key bindings for a lot of things. Um, so if I had a command and I wanted to do something like this, now that I'm in Emacs mode, if I hit Control A, it's going to go to the beginning of the line rather than selecting the whole line, and that's just a key binding that is um, in Emacs. Um, similarly, you can hit Control E and then go to the end of the line. Um, also, is a Emacs binding. So um, there are uh, edit modes for Windows, um, Emacs, and uh, they actually have a V, um, a Vim, pretty much uh, edit mode. So if you just do the V mode, you can actually do those key bindings as well. But I'm gonna switch back to Windows since that's what I'm familiar with. Um, as we saw before, there's a lot of actual options that you can set for PS Readline. Um, in addition to some of the history stuff, you can modify, you know, the edit mode. You can specify um, things like the colors, uh, and then there's even command validation stuff and tooltips that you can um, you can pop or uh, show and that kind of thing. So uh, let's look at actually modifying some of the colors. 
Um, there's a couple different ways that you can modify colors in PS Readline, and it's kind of handy. Uh, what you see here are the 24-bit color escape sequences um, that pretty much denote the different colors. Um, but you can also use um, the console color enumeration from .NET or um, even RGB, value, RGB values from um, like an HTML website. So here's an example of setting the colors to uh, use those different formats of colors. Uh, first we have this console color. Um, we're going to set errors to dark red. Um, and then we're going to set strings to a different color. I think it's kind of like a darker yellow gray, uh, brown color. Um, and then we're going to set commands to a color using the RGB value. So now when I type a command, you can see it's kind of this purple color instead of the orange color it was before. And strings are now this like darker uh, yellow color. So um, you can uh, mess with all the colors. You can see the colors kind of um, are available for the different syntax highlighting options. So you can go crazy there and kind of um, customize your prompt as you see fit. Um, and finally, I want to talk a little bit about um, making or modifying or creating um, PS Readline key handlers. So you can actually uh, assign uh, script blocks to execute when um, when particular keys are pressed or key cords are pressed, that kind of thing, um, and then have PS Readline take some sort of action. So some cool ones that I've seen are like setting up Control B to do a build, so it actually would invoke build, uh, MS Build if you hit Control B, um, or um, matching braces automatically. So I'm going to show you an example of that, and I'm just going to pop over to Visual Studio Code because it's um, open right there. Uh, so to actually set up a key, a, a readline key handler, what you can do is you can actually say that when a particular key is pressed, I want this script block here to execute. Um, and in this case, if any one of these keys are pressed, uh, what this is, uh, the intention of this is to insert a matching brace. So if I, you know, type one of these braces, it's going to insert the matching brace of the other side. Um, so you're going to have some information like the, the key that comes in, and then from there we can actually uh, write um, that key using some of the uh, PS Readline classes here um, to get the state of the actual buffer and then write the state of the buffer. And the reason it's doing this is that then it can um, support undo and that kind of thing. So what all we have to do is we can take this this particular thing here and plop it into our terminal and execute that. And now anytime I type um, a, a bracket of any kind, it's going to complete it for me. So as you can see, like if I type um, a brace there, it uh, completes it if it's any one of those three braces. So there are a, you know endless number of things that you can do here. Um, you know some of those examples that I gave earlier are available on the uh, Microsoft. Uh, repository and if you actually go out to github and you want a bunch of examples of the key bindings that they have set up or um, uh, just an example of a profile that they use for PS Readline um, here is a good sample uh, profile for PS Readline and it adds a whole bunch of cool things like pressing F7 to get your history or the, bra the brace matching that I just showed or string matching um, and here's an example of the control B where it uh, kicks off MS build. So you could take this and plop it into your profile so that anytime you load this up, you could have access to all these commands. So then you could go through and, you know, uh, kind of modify this to your uh, heart's content and uh, build all kinds of cool commands uh, into PS Readline. So in this video, we went through PS Readline and some of the basics as well as some of the advanced functionality of um, the module. I definitely say uh, if you don't have it already, uh, get it. And if you do have it, I would definitely suggest checking out 2.1 in the predictive um, IntelliSense. So if you like Module Monday, definitely subscribe to my channel because we'll be releasing another one of these next Monday. And thanks.